So time to get into a little bit of synthesis. Now, like I mentioned, if you haven't got Retrolog, you'll be using Halion, in which case you won't really be able to follow on with the synthesis side, or at least what I'm showing in Retrolog. Okay, so let's head into Retrolog. And we're gonna start with the initial preset. So I'll just give you a very brief explanation of sort of what's going on here. Okay, so the initial sound that you're hearing, that, that initial sort of saw wave sound is being produced by an oscillator over here. We've got three oscillators in Retrolog, and they all produce, you can have them set to produce, you know, whatever sort of sound you like. Uh, once the sound has been produced by the oscillator, it then travels through the filter, which you can use to sort of soften the sound, take out the high end, or have it fully open, which means all of the frequencies are traveling through it. And then we've got our envelope shapers, which basically enable us to shape the sound how we want. So if I change the one on the amplifier, so this is the main sort of output, and it will control the main dynamics of the actual sound. So if I change these, you can hear how that really sort of affects the sound and you can make a real plucky sort of sound if you want. You can have something with a really long tail by putting up the release. Etc. So we're just gonna set this up here for now and let's just get our oscillator right because we want to make a nice sort of sub sound. So generally the sounds or generally the oscillator wave shapes used for sub sounds are always going to be a triangle or a sine wave. Okay, so let's just play that on a sine wave. Now that is already sounding much more subby, but it's actually still a little bit too high, as in it's too um, high in pitch. So I want to lower this by an octave. Now, of course, I could do that in the MIDI. I could go into that and highlight all of this MIDI and then hit shift and a down arrow and that will move it down for me. But I can do that much more easily in Retrolog. So up here, I've got the main sort of control. This controls the entire synth. So if I change this, octave knob down to the next one down that will change it by 12 semitones and do exactly what I've just done in the MIDI but obviously a lot easier. There you go and you can hear that is really really low. Nice and subby. So I'm going to add just a bit of shape to this so Again, we've got our cutoff filter, so if I bring it right down, you're not hearing any of the high end at all. Um, so I'm going to bring it down to about halfway and set our decay down and our sustain just a little bit below that. Okay, so that's basically what we're aiming for. And it also, quite importantly, want to set the phase of this oscillator to fixed. So you'll notice that when it's on free, it sort of jumps around a little bit. It's not, uh, it doesn't always play. It's not always exactly the same. It sounds slightly different on each time that the, uh, that the MIDI hits. So I'm gonna click on free and change that to fixed. And that means that it will be exactly the same. It will re-trigger each time that it plays. Okay, so that's fine. Okay, so that's that oscillator sorted. That sounds pretty good. So I'm just gonna add one more to it. So I'm just gonna activate the second oscillator. Again, changing that from free to fixed. And I don't want it to have a saw wave. I want that to be a triangle. So I'm just gonna move that there. And there we go. You can really hear the sub sort of start to really take shape now. And I just wanna, it's got a bit of a click at the end you can hear, so I'm just gonna sort that out by lifting the release up just very slightly. And you can hear there it's got no clicks if I bring it down. Sort of has that little click at the end there, so I'm just gonna bring that up a bit just to get rid of that. Just make it slightly more punchy by bringing the decay down. Okay, so that sounds all right. Let's just try that with the rest of the track. And 
And that sounds pretty good, but I just want to add a bit more cutoff to that. And remember, this is obviously the sub, the very lowest of the low frequencies that we're adding here. So it's not like super prominent. Jay's going to add another layer to this bass to sort of really bring out the mid range of it as well, make it nice and punchy. But this is just the low end section of it, but also a really super important part of the bass line, of course. Okay, so that is it for this lesson. I'm going to hand you over to Jay and he's going to show you how to use the sampler track and how to add a sort of mid range layer to that bass line. So if you have any questions or comments about this lesson, please do share them in the comment section below. And if you found anything in this video helpful, please do like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching.